my name is Dr. Brian Curtis. I'm one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates. And today I'm here to talk to you about one of my all-time favorite dinosaurs, Pachycephalosaurus. The animal behind me has 18 letters in its first name, Pachycephalosaurus, second only to Carcharodontosaurus at 19 letters, in case you were wondering. Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis was one of the very last dinosaurs to survive. It lived all the way up until the end of the dinosaurs. At full length and height and width, we believe it was around 12 to 13 feet long, and it weighed somewhere in a range of 11, 1,200 pounds as an adult, so a little over a half a ton. It's known from that distinctive skull, that big dome behind me is up to 10 inches thick of just pure bone. And for the first 100 or so years Pachycephalosaurus was known, it was believed to be the dinosaur equivalent of the modern day sheep or battering rams that jump up on their hind legs and crash their heads against one another when fighting over territory, mates, or food. However, recently there's been some questioning about that and some research was done that suggests that the skulls were not used to ram head on. And if you look at that dome, it might be an interesting evolutionary question to ask why you would take two very rounded items and crash them against each other where they would likely slide past one another. So they did some computer modeling. They did a great work on the actual Pachycephalosaurus skulls that are out there and discovered that the injuries are more in line with what one would see if one smashed the side of their head against the flank of an opponent. So what's thought now is Pachycephalosaurus, which walk up to another Pachycephalosaurus and get shoulder to shoulder like giraffes do today, and then using their powerful, see if I can show this, big powerful legs and powerful tail, they would get a lot of power and then whip their head into the haunch of its opponent. Interesting on their studies, they showed that the damage to the brains or the, the skull damage was pretty much all isolated to those that had domes. And this got people thinking, and it had already been thought about for a while that there was a whole bunch of alleged Pachycephalosaur relatives hanging out in the same place at the same time. And they were identified by the different kinds of, of ornamentation on their head. So some had spikes, some had really crazy spikes, some had smaller spikes with the, with the dome starting to form. And so then it, it was realized that it's quite probable that all these different Pachycephalosaur ids are all part of the genus Pachycephalosaur us. So animals like Goyacephaly, Homalocephaly, uh, Draco Rex, and others are now believed to be different growth stages of a Pachycephalosaurus. And the juveniles, which interestingly enough, only the ones with spikes that were found with spikes on their head, all of them were juveniles. The thought is that the juveniles had these spikes when they were young, and as they grew up, the bone did something very strange. It reabsorbed those spikes and then added to this giant dome. You don't find many injuries on the small ones, but you find a high percentage of injuries on the domed ones that lack spikes. Those with spikes don't have the injuries. So it's thought that if you have a dome, you're likely the male, and if you did not have a dome and you had spikes, you were a juvenile or possibly a female. You know, it's really tough to tell gender within the fossil record. Uh, so as a result, these are hypotheses. It could very well be the females had the giant uh, domes and were bashing their heads against each other. But based on how males tend to react, at least mammalian bias, it's probably not the case. So sidestepping the issue of gender, source itself is an anomaly in a couple other ways. Its teeth are really strange. They're tiny teeth, but they have some serrations on them. So it's always been believed Pachycephalosaurus is an herbivore and as a member of the Ornithischia, it likely was. However, it's possible that it maybe supplemented its diet with a lizard here or there or some other kind of small animal it stumbled across because those serrations uh, do look a little bit overkill for chewing on plants. That being said, we've seen stranger things in the fossil record. In the ultimate herbivores kit, we offer up this, which is the toe claw or hoof claw of a Pachycephalosaur. Now, this particular item would have been covered in fingernail, or toenail in this case, and it's slightly curved, which would have allowed it to have had extra grip as it ran. So these animals were speedy, and if you were taking off and you have a little extra grip on your claw, it gives you a little extra oomph on your takeoff. So it's likely that not only could this have been used for a kick, it's reminiscent in a lot of ways of like an emu's toe claw, 
uh, and with the power that the animal behind me could generate with its hips, uh, definitely would have caused for a really bad day. Uh, it also could have turned and then just charged full speed ahead like a battering ram. This cranial missile, if it impacted a predator, would have definitely broken or fractured some ribs, broken some ribs, uh, conceivably knocked the wind out of something. So if enough of them turned and charged and ran into an animal, it could definitely act as a deterrent. But most likely pachycephalosaurs relied on their speed to get away. So great pachycephalosaurus material has been found in the last two decades. Um, the classics are on display in the American Museum of Natural History and skulls are throughout the U.S., but the Rocky Mountain Dinosaur Resource Center has found some unbelievably neat specimens and they're on display there and throughout I mean, museums around the world. Next time you get a chance to see a pachycephalosaurus, after you ooh and awe over its amazingly awesome skull, take a look at its legs and appreciate the power that was there and then imagine instead of battering ram head on, what do you think about it swaying back and forth and thwacking its opponent? As always, like, subscribe, comment below. Looking forward to hearing from you, and we'll be bringing more information to you soon. Thank you kindly. Adios.